what is this snail's law and why is it so so important that it affects your lives directly without you even knowing it i will answer that question a little later and the answer is quite shocking here are some of its critical applications. It is a refractometer that tells you how much water is mixed in milk. When used in excess can lead to anaphylaxis, which is a life-threatening allergic reaction. Now that you know all of it, I'm going to make a bold statement, a huge statement, and there it was, the holy grail of laws when it comes to light. Snell's Law or Ibn Sahel's Law in this video, I will give you compelling reasons why it should be called Ibn Sahal's law. Now, before you start writing hate comments about how we Muslims are incapable of doing anything except spreading terrorism or copying from other civilizations, at least first watch this video. And you, my Muslim brothers and sisters, do not miss this video. I assure you that you will go away with such immense knowledge that you will be willing to spread about Ibn Sahal voluntarily and direct people to this YouTube video. But what is this Snell's law and why is it so so important that it affects your lives directly without you even knowing it? It was discovered in 1621 by a Dutch astronomer called Willebrod Snellius, also called Snell. In simple words, Snell's law states that the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence and sine of the angle of refraction is constant as long as the medium are the same. In other words, as long as air and water are two mediums through which light passes, the signs of angle of incidence and signs of angle of refraction remains constant. And it does not matter at which angle the light enters the medium. If your medium are water and milk, then the ratio for these two medium will also remain the same. What Snell's law states is sine value of this to sine value of this will always be constant as long as air and water are constant. Meaning, ratio of sine i to sine r is constant always. Then it doesn't matter at what angle the light hits the water. If you change the medium, let's say you put water instead of air and milk instead of water. Again, this angle to this angle, the ratio, the sine value of this to sine value of r will always remain constant. They would be different from one another because the medium are different. But as long as the medium remain the same, this will always remain constant. This is what Snell's law states. Now you will ask, what is sine angle of incidence and sine angle of refraction? I will answer that question a little later and the answer is quite shocking. For now, just keep in mind that their ratio is always constant. Before we move forward, here is a very important message that I wish to give you. Every day, we wish to form a connection with Allah. And the best way to do so is by connecting with Quran, the word of Allah itself. So many of us read and are even half it, mashallah. And then there are so many who want to write Quran one day, but don't know how to do that. This is where our Tracing Quran ebook comes in. With this ebook, you just need to download once you order and you will have Quran for life that you can write on. Also, because our Tracing Quran is based on Uthmani Musaf, it is 100% authentic. So you can write with the peace of mind that you're writing without any mistakes. And as this is an ebook, it comes with 100% flexibility to print whenever you want and how many ever times you want. Should you wish to write one ayah or one surah 10 times, you can do that with our Tracing Quran ebook. Just print it and write it. Needless to say, it makes for a perfect gift for your children and your family alike. Get your copy now and start earning rewards with every letter you write. You can order from the first link in the bio. Now let's get back to the video. Just why is it so, so important? Well, other than the fact that Snell's Law is taught in every single school around the world, here are some of its critical applications. Snell's law has incredible use in physics, especially in optics. Your eyeglasses are made using principles of Snell's law. Your contact lenses are made using principles of Snell's law. Your cameras are made using principles of Snell's law. Heck, there's an instrument called refractometer that uses this law to calculate the refractive index of liquids. Refractive index is nothing but the speed of light in vacuum over speed of light in that medium not that important. It is a refractometer that tells you how much water is mixed in milk. 
It is the refractometer that is used in chemical labs that uses to measure the sugar content in various substances, food, beverages, medicines, eyeglasses, lenses, even petroleum products. Everywhere, Snell's law of refraction is used. In the beginning of the video, I said, your very life depends on it and Snell's law affects you directly even though you don't know. And here is the reason. If we didn't know Snell's law of refraction, you may not have eyeglasses, meaning many of us might naturally turn blind. We wouldn't know the concentration of any particular substance in the medicine. Let me give you a simple example. One of the most common ingredients used in medicines is calcium carbonate, which if used in excess can lead to kidney stone and even impair kidney function. Polysorbate 80 is one of the ingredients used in medicines in antibiotics when used in excess can lead to anaphylaxis, which is a life threatening allergic reaction. It can happen within seconds or minutes of consuming it. And all of this is measured to the decimal point using Snell's law of refraction. So by now, you know how important Snell's law of refraction is. Now that you know all of it, I'm going to make a bold statement, a huge statement that this law should be called Ibn Sahal's law. And why is that? Because he discovered it in 984 CE, almost 650 years before Snell did. But should we at least look at what Ibn Sahal stated in his law? What Ibn Sahal said is simple. Again, consider two media, air and water. This is the incident light. Once it hits the surface of the new media that is water, it refracts. If you draw a circle around it, you get these arcs. This is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of refraction. What Greeks said is that the ratio of these are always constant and they determined that by measuring this arc. However, they were wrong. Instead, Ibn Sahel said it is the squad that should be taken into consideration. Let's call it A, B, C, D. So as per Ibn Sahel, the ratio of A, B to C, D was always constant as long as the media remained constant. But the question is, how is this same as what Snell said? Because remember, Snell's law is sine value of I is upon sine value of R is constant. Theta is nothing but the sine value. Let's look at it. For this, you need to know a simple law of trigonometry. Sine value of any angle is always a ratio of the side opposite to the angle and hypotenuse. In other words, sine value of I will be AB upon R, considering this as R. Similarly, sine value of R would be CD upon R, which is the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. Applying basic rule of math, let's equate this. Sine theta of I, that is sine value of the angle I and sine value of the angle R, as per this, is AB upon R further divided by CD upon R. Knowing these two cancel out, we get AB upon CD, which is constant. This is the Snell's law explained 650 years ago by Ibn Sahal. Absolute genius, isn't it? There are high chances that Mr. Snell did not copy from Ibn Sahal because Ibn Sahal's documents were lost for hundreds of years and were only discovered 20 years ago by Rushdi Rashid, who found two manuscripts written by Ibn Sahal, one in Tehran and the other in Damascus. And they both were about burning instruments, which is a treatise written by Ibn Sahal. And there it was, the holy grail of laws when it comes to light. The law 
of refraction. Rushdie Rashid consolidated them and published a paper which is accepted worldwide and that is a proof enough that Ibn Sahal was the first one to derive and prove the law of refraction. I have linked the entire paper in the description. You can log into the research website and find it out yourself. And this is why the scientific community should rename it as Ibn Sahal law. With all due respect to Mr. Snell, Ibn Sahal may not be the most noted figure from the golden age of Islam, but he gave the world the most famous law of light, the one that dominates all the theories and experiments of the modern day world when it comes to light. I hope you loved this video. It took us almost 72 hours of research to make this one video. All I ask of you is to like and share this video and please subscribe to the channel. It is free and I will continue enlightening you about the golden age of Islam. And do not forget to get your copy of Freezing Quran ebook. It's the first link in the description. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.